Get full access to over 15,000 episodes with your free trial. My Outdoor TV. Sign up today. It's 4 a.m. on the morning. We're heading out to um, fly off to New Zealand. And um, <laughs> everyone's kind of excited, but probably <laughs> more tired. Just overtired. We've um, got most of our gear. has been ready for a couple of days, but you kind of check and then check and then you open bags and you start crying again. Um, we've got our rifles, which is our next biggest move, the rifles and bows to get them on the, um, get them on the planes and make sure that everything's all right with the dangerous goods permits. We've got all the customs clearance done. So now it's just um, test those services and hopefully those procedures work like they should. And um, from here, I'll hope to see you at the airport. How was the drive in? Yeah, uh, we kept they kept stopping. looking over the edge. Uh, yeah. to see how oh no! Was. Yeah, it's big country, oh, isn't it? Yeah. We because we, we were on so the side steep. of the like big drop off. Yeah. So we were like looking over the edge, like, oh my god, can you just get to the other side of the road? <laughs> yeah. So but, what do you um, think so far? It's, it's deep. Absolutely I did tell you that. Beautiful. I did not do it off Stairmaster. <laughs> yeah. I think um, what you should have done last time is taken photos and then showed us how steep these things are. Actually, Kieran told me not to show you any pictures. What? <laughs> that's, that's not prepared. Ash said to me probably. on the way up that if Dad hadn't taken more pictures for her, she would have worked harder with <laughs> exercising. <laughs> It's it, it's amazing land, but man, it's um, it is steep. Oh, yeah. You know this is this place is a workout, but you get the best animals in places like this. It's so beautiful. Yeah. We like have rainforest crossed with country, crossed with mountain. It's just, it's got everything. We just stopped to take photos like every second. I know. You just took friggin' forever. <laughs> It was mostly James. James actually got out of the car at one point and we were like, you need to get back in the car because mum and dad are waiting for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what if... Can you guys get close to the goats? Yep, the other day I literally grabbed one by the back leg. <laughs> yeah. And then I let it go, because we had these guys here, and I said I'll grab one. <laughs> and I snuck up and grabbed its back leg and I just let it go and it ran around a tree and then came back to it. <laughs> and my dog I was like, you like to play rough. Stuff. Yeah, I thought I think it was another goat or something. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't have my dog where I reckon it would have come right back up. Yeah. Tree. It's really <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> we just got within about 30 yards of the world of beast then. day one to go and find a big red stag with the bow. See if we can get something. Hopefully, wish us luck. Ed, that's all because it might get in the way. We'll put the 
broad heads down anyway, so we don't yeah. all cut ourselves Good in the idea. face. <laughs> yeah. Smile, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> We got out really early before the sun rose and the plan was to hike up to the ridge and sit on top of that while all the animals came out of the bush. Oh, really? Is this a seeker? Yeah, It's like a single. Similar to an elk, really. Yeah. It's kind of squeal. Yeah. The elk just sound unnatural. I yeah, for, the, for when you look at what sort of the size yeah. of the animal is. Yeah. Expect it to sound like Oh, it just doesn't sound yeah. like anything that comes from an animal yeah. at all. <laughs> Well, ready to go. As soon as we got out of the 4x4, we could hear them all around us. We had red deer roaring, we had fallow croaking, we even heard a seeker deer. He's <laughs> like, no thanks. <laughs> It was so cool. I was so excited. I'd never been able to hunt the rut before, or the roar as they call it in New Zealand, and I loved it. That shot him off. Chasing them out, big one. It looks heavier, but not longer. Right, I'm with sure. those fellow does are. Yeah. He chased him off in a heartbeat. He didn't even have to try. <laughs> he came straight out of the bushes. Something just moved in. See them moving into that in there.
We saw loads of young red stags roaring, but it was still early in the piece. So we pick up our stuff and head down the ridge to try and see if we can find anything a bit older. As we're heading along the ridge, we heard a red stag roaring, and so we quietened down, we held it up, and we made a plan to stalk in on him. He was only young, but I had my bow with me, and I'd never had the chance to get anything with my bow before, so I thought this was the perfect opportunity. Brad stayed back and roared to him to try and get him to come in closer to us, or at least distract him while Dad and I stalked in. Slowly but surely, we stalked up to within 30 yards.
something we always do after we travel with our rifles is check them at the range before we head out for a hunt, especially if we've traveled any long distances. For this trip, we'd had our rifles on two aeroplanes and then we'd driven four hours down to the hunting property. Even though we've got them in pretty good cases, that's a lot of banging around that they go through. So it always pays to put a few rounds through them once you get to the hunting property, just to make sure they're still hitting smack on. Yeah, that's right in the bullseye. Yeah, that makes us happy. I don't know if you can see that ridge well behind me, but we come from way up the back behind that. We had to go through the guts of it to get to where we are now to try and get to a position to bowl over this big stag. No. The wind's not working well for us. It's got a 50-50. So we've done a bit of probably a K trek from where we were sitting on top of the mountains down into the guts of these gullies to try and get to this fella. Anyway, here goes it. Well, we spent a big day out hunting um, early morning this morning and we found a absolute ripper stag. Nice big 12 point sitting up on top of this hill and he was holding probably eight or nine different hinds. So we're gonna try and chase him in a couple of days, but um, we tried to chase him this afternoon and just could not get onto him. The wind was not in our favor at all. So we are going to rest tomorrow. <laughs> James and Tasha are gonna have a go and see what they can find. They're gonna try to go after a fellow and a red. My Sunto with the steps has unwound. It's gone. It's given up. That's how many steps we did. <laughs> Not including all the kilometres. Anyway, we'll get him. Day two, Jess and Dad decided to stay back at the cabin and I was going to go out hunting. We decided to get the bow out this time and we found a really good area that we thought we could get up really close to the deer. We got to the top of one of the bigger hills and started calling and just sat there for a while to see what would come in. It was really awesome to see how many animals came in after Brad started calling. We saw loads of animals, we saw some goats, some red deer, some fallow deer, we even saw a seeker at one point. <laughs> was amazing up there, like scenery you've never seen before. We even saw some feral goats, which I really liked because I've never seen goats in the wild before, which is weird, but I really liked it. And then we saw a fallow stag that was good enough to start chasing. One of my favorite things about going hunting is seeing animals in their natural habitat, seeing what they do when we're not around.
He was about 150 metres in front of us, so we thought that instead of going straight on towards him, we'd come around the side a little bit and try and get him from the side. hunting isn't a fast process. You've got to stalk in very slowly, very quietly to try and get in on an animal. This means it took us a really long time to get that couple hundred metres and actually get within shooting range of this deer. As we've come up to where we saw the deer before, we've crested the hill and he was gone. This is just what happens with bow hunting and hunting in general. Sometimes the deer just walk away because they didn't want to stay there. It's hunting. It's day three and the weather forecast was not good. Brad told us that we we're expecting a cyclone nearby. So we start and we see nothing. We hear nothing. The first day we had hit the mountain and before we'd got out of the 4x4, we were hearing deer roaring everywhere. This day it was gray and rainy and cold and we heard nothing and we saw nothing. It's pissing with rain and we just summoned this small New Zealand hill after all the stock and side by side. And this is what we find. It's pretty darn sick. There it is. It's soaking wet. Absolutely drenched. Thunder, lightning, the whole box of dust. Hammerings. Ever since we left this morning. It is nasty. We're hoping to get a big one. Do your big red call. <laughs> We're here on day three of our New Zealand red hunt. We've come up to the ridge that we saw a big 12 point red stag on the first day to try and have a look for him, but it's been raining all morning and as you can probably hear the thunder's pretty loud, so they're all kind of bedded up at the moment, we're hoping he'll come out to play sometime soon. So it's been raining since we left this morning. Yeah, it's pretty serious country. We've climbed to the top of about three different peaks. And we've seen a couple of decent big reds, but we seem to be running the ridges there not. But we'll get there sooner or later. We'll walk into one. And now, I'm gonna try and get up these two mountain goats.
fucking... You absolutely smacked it. <laughs> what a day! What a day! <laughs> we have had wind, rain, we have had lightning, thunder. <laughs> nice work, Brad! You can't really explain the feeling that you get after a hunt is over and you've finally got something on the ground. It's really hard to explain to someone who hasn't hunted before. And I think it's probably one of the biggest reasons that we clash so much with non-hunters. Because it's something that you have to experience for yourself. How's that look, Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> he's huge! He is, he's good bodied as well. Yeah. Look at the mane on him. I know. Old beast. Holding 16 or 17 hinds. And we, we had another one flipping 20 yards from us, trying, trying to challenge. Didn't even know we were there. That is one thumper of a free range stag. We hope you've enjoyed this free episode. To continue watching, start your free trial now.